Hey guys, why not checking in once again um, from my garage gym. So today I wanted to make a video. Um, this is a video basically answering a question that I've been asked uh, pretty much every single video I've made. Um, I know it's a long time coming. The reason I did decide to make this video today is the fact that I feel my gym is about 90-95% complete. What I mean by that is that um, at the moment I feel you know everything I need um, I have. Um, I've got, you know, and everything that I have here is something that I'm not going to let go of. Um, and I'll explain that more as we go on in this video. Anyways, um, so like I was saying, you know, I got everything I need. I don't think there's really anything on my wish list at the moment. Um, and it's a perfect time for me to explain, um, you know, kind of want to break down the costs, um, you know, in detail, uh, why I feel it's necessary, why I like it so much. Um, and, um, you know, basically why I haven't sold it. Um, there's been a lot of different uh, variations in my gym, a lot of different iterations. I've had three different racks, I've had three different types of uh, plates, I've had two different types of dumbbells. Every little equipment I've had I've upgraded from and, uh, and uh, is basically what I upgraded to. Um, so, so the total cost of my gym, I wanted to give you guys a little uh, breakdown of it. It's not going to include any taxes or shipping. Um, the reason being is that everyone's different, so everybody's going to be in a little, little uh, playing field. Um, I'm living in California, so the tax rate here is about 8%, so you know, in the total factor of all the prices and everything you have to add into where you live, as well as shipping. I mean, if you live in Ohio, or if you live in wherever these equipment are made, it's going to be really cheap for you because of the fact that you're going to have to, um, you could just drive there versus if you live in Canada or Australia, the pricing would be a lot different. So, you know, I just really wanted to do a little, even playing field in dollars and cents, um, just how much I paid for it. Uh, note that, like I said earlier, I've had different variations in my gym. I've had different types of racks and things like that. So that overall price of everything I have is literally what I have currently in the gym. Um, so, yeah, that's basically my uh, video for today, so let's get started. Alright guys, basically the first thing that I wanted to talk about was the uh, center point of my gym. Every gym literally needs a uh, power rack, uh, some sort of rack to hold the weights up, um, some place where you can uh, lift alone uh, and be safe. Basically safety is the number one thing. Um, so this is the RM6 Monster Rack. Um, the base price of this uh, behemoth is a two thousand five hundred and eighty dollars and forty cents. Um, now, this you know, the my rack obviously isn't just the basic um, uh, rack that you would get at that price range. I've obviously added a few things to it. I've made a lot of modifications to it that I will not add in price, just because those are those are custom prices that you would have to go through Rogue for. So basically, the base price of this rack is two thousand five hundred and eighty dollars. Um, the second part I also purchased is the XM43M. That's the uh, you know that's that pull-up bar with the different variations in grip. That cost me about $182.50. Um, and the nameplate, as you can see right there, that is also extra. That cost me about $225. Now what you'll find here is I have a J-hook setup that came free with the Rogue RM6. But behind it, you'll see that there are two large hooks right there. That's the Rogue Monster Mono Lift. You'll find that at the Rogue website for about $295. It's a great addition to any rack. Um, and below those, you'll see that this is the easy adjustable Soranex um, uh, safety straps. I chose this over the Rogue uh, Pinpipe safety systems just because it's much better. Um, it's quieter, it's easier to adjust, and also it's a lot safer on the bar. It's a lot nicer looking too. I like the Ferrari red color. Um, what you can see up top, that's the uh, Rogue Matador. It's a nice little dip station, very, very stable. That cost me around the range of $140. Um, and you can see behind that, there's some chains. And those are, you know, I got that for, on a deal from, um, I believe I got it on Craigslist. That cost, that ran me around 120 bucks. I didn't really have to uh, run anywhere to pick it up or have it shipped. That would have cost a lot more. So definitely a nice, nice little addition. One of my favorite pieces of gym um, training additions that I have attached to the rack, very, very stable in that fashion, is the Rogue Landmine. It's a Rogue Monster Landmine that's about $118. And next to it, it's the, um, I believe that's the, the angled uh, Landmine grip handle, uh, also from Rogue. It's great for working, you know, like some a form of T-bar row. It's not necessarily a T-bar row, but it's a great rowing um, piece of equipment that ran me around $65. And uh, on this end, this is one of um, 
another piece I got from Sorinex. I haven't used it as much as I should, but it's a great piece of mobility equipment. That's the uh, row, no, I'm sorry, that's the Sorinex trigger bar. Um, that ran me around $200. In the back, as you can see right there, I haven't used these bad boys in a while. Um, maybe I should, maybe, you know, it's, it's basically what you use for belt squats. You strap something around your waist and you could squat from a, from a, from a different height. Um, puts a lot of less pressure on your spinal column. This is, I got this from Black Widow Training Gear. I got it for about, um, let me see here, I think I got it for about $200 plus shipping. So around $200 for those bad boys. And the last thing that you'll see on my rack, these are the, uh, you know, these are my favorite metal plates that I have in my in my gym. This is the um, Ivanko, O-M-E-Z-H. Um, I have six pairs of 45s. I got a pair of 35s, a pair of 25s, uh, two pairs of 10s, two pairs of 5s, and 2.5s. Um, now the prices of these are going to vary definitely um, from when you buy it, just for the price of steel, also where you buy it, and um, you know if you're lucky you can pick it up on Craigslist. I bought these brand new, and uh, what I paid for these were about $2,319 on uh, dumbbellbuddy.com, and I don't believe that's without taxes. So you know, you know, budget budget for these. These are definitely well worth it. My favorite training plates I've ever had. I've had several different types, but this is one of my favorites. As you can see right here, this is my um, Olympic weightlifting platform slash deadlift platform. I also bolt my uh, rogue rack onto it. Um, this is actually not that expensive. I made a video on how, how to make it a while back. For the wood, I basically paid about $200. I have uh, six pieces of wood. The cheap ones are in the bottom, so there's four in the bottom. Uh, cost me about $25 a piece. And the nicer wood on top, which cost me about $50 a piece. Um, for the rubber part, the stall mats, um, those are approximately three different uh, slabs of stall mats and I cut them all into, into pieces and th that ran me about $150, they were about $50 a piece. Um, as you can see right there, this is my uh, Rogue deadlift jack. I absolutely love this thing, this is the version 2.0, it comes with um, you know, the UHMW plastic on it to protect the knurling of the bar, that ran me about, uh, I think that cost me hundred and sixty five dollars as well there's a few things I made um, in in my gym as you can see including the deadlift platform uh, Olympic weightlifting platform I it's it was really cheap for me to make um, the, as you can see there's the uh, the bumper plate rack as well as the deadlift uh, uh, deadlift uh, blocks um, the deadlift blocks cost me about 50 bucks 50 bucks you know four by four pieces of wood some excess stall mat pieces and also the um, the the bumper plate rack was around forty dollars in wood in uh, in two by sixes or something like that. As you can see right here, um, I do a lot of Olympic weightlifting as well as well as a lot of deadlift work. So I decided to uh, you know accompany my metal plates with some uh, rubber bumper plates since they're going to be hitting the ground a lot. Plus I didn't really like all the noise of uh, you know um, metal hitting on ground possibly waking up the neighbors so these are a little bit softer but not by much but they look nice I have two pairs of 55s uh, three pairs of 45s one pair of each of 25s and 35s and these cost me roughly fourteen hundred and five dollars um, and these are the ones actually that uh, I got from the two, uh, 2014 games really proud of them these are the ones that um, Camila Blanc Bazinet as well as uh, Rich Fronting won uh, that's where they won the uh, the CrossFit Games back in that day. All right, guys. So let's talk barbells. As you can see right there, I have a couple um, more than more than I need. Definitely more than I need. Actually, I've been looking for a multi-purpose bar. I used to have the Rogue Bar 2.0, but I sold it. I totally regret that decision. But anyways, let's talk about the bars I currently have. As you can see, it's hanging on the wall. That's the Rogue Version 2 Gun Rack. Um, I believe they dropped the price. Currently, it's fifty-two dollars. Um, I believe fifty-two dollars and fifty cents. It's very stout. Holds all the weights of the rack. Uh, you know, on that rack pretty well. Um, does not budge whatsoever. The first bar up top that you'll see there, the one that's all rusted up, that's the Bear Steel Ohio Power Bar. I personally like the um, the rust. I like the patina. It's very very stiff. It's a 29 millimeter bar. It's great for you know power lifting, bench squat. Uh, not so much dead for me personally. I prefer the Whippy Bar. Right below that one, that's a. I think it was like an $80 uh, Sports Authority or a Big Five bar. Um, I use that bar specifically for the landmine. I hate tearing up the um, you know the sleeves of my nicer bars in the landmine, so that's the, basically the purpose of it. 
Below that one, the third bar, the long, the long one that you'll see right there in the black oxide finish, that is my Oki deadlift bar. That ran me about $400. It's very, very whippy. It's a 27 millimeter bar, so it's a little slimmer. Um, it's a bit longer, so you get a great amount of whip on it. Below that, that is the Black Widow training gear. Um, that's the multi-grip press bar. I uh, absolutely love that bar for pressing, uh, for giving my shoulders a break. As you can see, there's a space in the middle of that bar for you know when you do overhead pressing so you don't hit your, your chin. Um, so that bar cost me roughly, I think it was $275. Uh, below that, that is an Ivanko curl bar. Um, I got that about half off. It was a used bar. Um, I think that the MSRP on that is like close to $500, but I got it for around $225. Uh, 200, yeah, $225. And below that one, that is the uh, famous uh, safety squat bar from um, Elite FTS. It's a great piece of equipment. Um, it's a great, it's a different variation of squatting. Gives your, you know, it's a lot, it, it's, it's in between uh, front squatting and uh, high bar squatting. That's how, that's the feel of it. So that cost me around $389. And what we have here, this is the uh, Eleco Competition uh, weightlifting barbell. It's my favorite bar that I have in the gym. Definitely never hits the rack. It always sits in the platform. As you can see, it has the uh, IWF certification sticker on it. Um, this bar ran me a cool $1,049. You know, definitely, definitely worth it. What we have here is what I call my free weight section. As you can see, I have a load of dumbbells on top of a beautiful MaxiCam rack. Um, there's also my bench, that, as you can see right there. Uh, the maxi cam rack, I think I got it half off. I got it from some guy, some guy on Craigslist, very nice gentleman. Uh, paid about $500 for it. On top of that is a bunch of dumbbells. I love the rubber dumbbells. I've had the, um, the Ivanko freestyle weights. I've had hex metal dumbbells, but nothing beats the feel of a rubber dumbbell. Plus, it's very safe on my floor. I have from, let's see, starting from there, it's 25, uh, 30, 35, 40, uh, 50. Uh, 50, I mean 60, 70, 80, 90, and uh, hundreds, and that cost me around the range of $1,496, so $1,496, definitely well worth it, it'll last me a lifetime. Um, so the rack is 500 and the dumbbells, so roughly about $2,000 for that whole setup. As you can see right here, I love this, I love this uh, bench, it's very multi-purpose very useful. Um, that's the Rogue AB2 bench. I think it's the best bench that they had. They got that from the Nebula Fitness model and that ran me about $815, uh, you know, cool cash. You also got to have some dumb, some kettlebells here and there. Um, what you can see I have is I have a 53 pound kettlebell, I have an 80 pound kettlebell, 35 pounder, and I think this is a 26 pound kettlebell, a little 7.5 pound kettlebell there. Um, I don't know exactly what I paid for it in total, but um, for, for that setup, I'm gonna say I paid roughly around $300. Just cause you know, maybe like 1.5 or one pound, $1 per pound, so $300 for those bad boys. And as you can see right there, um, those red, green, and blue plates, I decided to make my own change plates. I thought the uh, professional style um, Olympic change plates were a little too expensive. So I got about 35 pounds of plates that I painted. Um, so that cost me around $70. I got those plates cheap from like Sports Authority or something. All right, a few little training equipment over here as well. This is my, mo this is my mobility area. As you can see, the ab mat right there, that cost me around 35. The uh, slam ball, 50 pound slam ball, one of my favorite pieces of training equipment was about 100, it was 50 pounds. And it's doing, it's, you know, it's lasting pretty well. And the game box you'll find online, and again, faster, for about $125. I have a lot of miscellaneous training equipment. I'll, I'll put all the, uh, the numbers up on the screen here, but I bought a bunch of different bands uh, from both from Elite FTS and uh, Rogue Fitness. And those uh, roughly cost me around $200, everything. Um, different, a lot of different variations, a lot of different workouts and mobility work you can do with that. Over here I have um, 
I'm sorry, let me show you the whole setup. This is my, I got this, this is a Costco rack. Very, very useful, a lot of different bins that I just throw things into. Keeps things organized. I got my SBDs, cost me about 90. My rebounds cost me about 70. Um, I have a lot of different little things here. I got this, uh, you know, the hip circle. The hip circle for warming up, that cost me about 25. Um, I got the slingshot, that was around $50 at Rogue. One of my favorite pieces here, this is the rep boards. I did a review on this a long time ago, but this was around $60. Um, you know, just a lot of things here and there. I got a lot of belts. Um, you know, I'm reluctant to add those prices up as well. I got the, you know, the Inzer, I got the Spud Ink, I got the Rogue belt. Also got an Elite FDS belt in there. But I'll just throw in some, some cash here and there, and you know, I didn't really want to add up the price, but yeah. I got plenty of different equipment, accessory-wise. Very, very useful. This is the uh, now famous, I think everybody knows what this is. This is the Spud Ink lat pull down attachment. I was gonna buy a lat pull down, um, you know, probably put it in that corner over there somewhere, but um, I decided not on doing that. And this is a great um, addition. This is a great uh, piece of equipment, uh, alternative to a lat pull down. All right, last but not least, this corner of my gym, the one with Ryu and Akuma in it. Um, that's going to be my back inverter. I usually hang upside down after my workouts for about five minutes. I feel great. I feel much better. It definitely helps decrease the pressure in my lumbar, you know, upper thoracic spine and everything like that. Back there, you'll see that I have a rogue sled. That is the um, economy version sled. I think it was about a hundred bucks. And right here, you will find uh, one of the great pieces of training equipment I have in my gym. This is the Rogue GHD. You'll find it online for about $695. Def a lot of different variations in what you can do, what you can work out with. Great piece of training equipment. And my shoes down there if you want to take a look. So yeah, that's basically the gist of everything that I have in my gym at the moment. Like I said earlier, this isn't everything that I've had. This is everything that's in my gym currently. Um, I totaled everything up, the ones I've talked about. I didn't really want to add in you know, things like shoes, belts, little accessory straps here and there. So basically for the hard items, for everything that's you know heavy duty, um, that's cemented, that's part of the earth <laughs> per se, it's, uh, it cost me a total of $17,031.40. Um, I didn't really want to add in the tax. Like again, I said in California, that's 8% and shipping could be anywhere from five to 10% of the total price of the equipment. Um, you know, uh, definitely this is worth it to me. Um, I'm not in any debt by, debt by any means from, from all the equipment that I have. I think anybody can be just as happy with uh, much less. Um, I could be a lot happier with just, you know, a cheap little, uh, no, I'm just kidding, I wouldn't be, but you know, for, for a rack um, that you could do basically any of the exercises that I can do in here with. Everything in here is a luxury. Um, absolutely, you can go, you can go, go on Craigslist and buy something for 10% of what I paid for and literally just get a better workout. As good if not a better workout than I usually do. Everything here, is my, um, this is my happy place, this is a hobby for me. Um, I don't recommend that everyone go out and spend this much money. What I do recommend is you buy quality. Um, I think quality equipment will last you the length of your training career, will last the length of your children's training career. Some of these bars, I believe this rack, I believe these plates, this GHD, these dumbbells behind me, they're gonna outlast my lifting career. And um, the beautiful thing about weightlifting equipment is that it can always be resold. I always talked about how many different equipment I've had before, and everything that I've sold, I've sold nearly as much as I've paid for it. Um, some of the things I've done, I've actually bought cheap equipment and refurbished them and actually sold it for more than I actually paid for it. So a lot of these things, you know, they definitely will pay for themselves. They're definitely, it makes me happy. Um, it's it's uh, something, it's it's my happy place, you know what I mean? So do, uh, if, if it's worth it to you, uh, do, you know, buy a home gym, buy quality. I do highly recommend uh, companies such as Rogue Fitness. Um, I know Sorin X makes amazing equipment, Elite FDS. Um, haven't really had much experience with, again, faster rep fitness or get RX, but I've heard great things. And um, yeah, that's basically the answer to the question, how much does my gym cost? Um, I know right now I'm not really interested in buying anything, but you know, that will change, I think, weekly, monthly, uh, daily even. I think I'm always online looking for the best thing out there. 
Anyways, thanks guys for watching. Um, I hope this was informative. Um, I hope you know this will uh, influence you one way or another for the, for the better. And uh, if you like what you saw, please hit that like button. It helps me a lot. If you uh, think that this was a cool video, please do share it. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. And if you frequent my channel often, please do subscribe. Thanks, guys. Um, see you guys next time.